Buenas noches, as I uh, believe they say in these parts. I don't say that myself, you understand, but then I'm English. Cuthbert McClue at your service. Inspector Cuthbert McClue of Scotland Yard, which is in England, as it happens. I'm here on secondment to the Cuban police force. Great bunch of lads. And it's my pleasure. No, no, no. Not pleasure. Wrong word. Duty. That's more like it. Duty from the Latin debitus, you see. Anyway, it's my duty to investigate this uh, business. Incidentally, it's hot, isn't it? Hot. Cuba in August really is jolly hot and humid as well. Very, very humid. Anyway, this is what we know. This hotel, the Casanova, is, was, owned by Senor Rico Ricardo. But yesterday evening, around seven o'clock it was, just before dinner, I love dinner, I do, there was an explosion in Senor Ricardo's office. Turned out to be an exploding cigar, the old exploding cigar trickaroony. The room was locked from the inside, no fingerprints on the key at all, but people broke the door down and there he was, exploded. Awful mess it was, all over the place. So, this is a murder case, has to be. And you, my hombres and hombrets, you're all suspects. I'm sorry to say, one of you done it. I'll find out who that is, but... Look, what you can do is have a chat amongst yourselves, see what you can find out, maybe give old Cuthbert a bit of a hand, what, and I'll feed you some stuff that we found. Clues, that sort of thing. I'll leave you to it and I'll be back later. Um, hasta luego. Is that right? Hola! It's me again, Inspector Cuthbert McClue. It's all going terrifically well, don't you think? We're finding out stuff left, right, and plumb in the middle as well. So, Rico was a naughty boy, mixed up in all sorts of shenanigans with gangsters and bandits and desperados and so forth. Him and C.D. Gonzalez, they were working with Che Guava to smuggle stuff into America. Cigars, booze, girls, pretty much anything they could lay their hands on. But then... Rico pulled the plug on the whole operation, baby, bath water, the whole shebang. We don't know why yet, but I think we will, because we're graced by the presence of some top investigators. Not just yours truly. We've also got Butch Highway here of the American Secret Services and Sir Ian Lemming from my own parish, bit of an agent himself, our man in Havana. And they've already been looking into our chum Rico. Great to have you on board, chaps. And the ladies, gracious me, the ladies. There's Lola Cabana there, who doesn't seem to give two figs for ethics and morals and such. Meanwhile, Nico Marx was heard arguing about money with the dead man. Not when he was dead, obviously. I mean, when he was still alive. And then we've got two English roses taking pot shots at each other. Sisters, if you please. Sisters are doing it to each other. But look, there's some new information popped up. Turns out that Rico wasn't killed by the exploding cigar thingy after all. No, we've had a forensic pathology chappy look at the body, what's left of the body anyway, and he reckons that friend Rico was already dead. Had been for about an hour or so before the cigar blew up. Thing is, he'd been strangled. Somebody had come up behind him and strangled the poor fellow to death using a cravat. Garrotted him. Cravatted him even. And it is an interesting thing. The cravat had a very distinctive motif on it. A pair of crossed pistols. And then his body was left in the office, along with the exploding cigar that had a time delay fuse on it. That's a queer old business. Anyway, I'll leave it with you. Have a good old rummage through the brain cells, why don't you? I'll be back. I caramba! I'm getting a bit confused. So... Lady Lemming and Lady Common aren't really sisters at all. Well, they are sisters, but not full sisters. They're half-sisters. Their mother, the Duchess of Plymouth, came here to Havana back in the 1920s and had an affair with Rico Ricardo, and Lady Lemming is Rico's daughter. Blimey! Lady Lemming says this is the first she's ever heard of it, but her big sis, Lady Common, knew all about it. This is bad news for Lady Lemming. Those British newspapers are going to love this story, even if it destroys her film career. And it won't do much for Sir Ian's career either. He says he knew nothing about it, but he seems pretty well informed about everything else. And then 
There's Lady Common, living with her father in exile in America after he'd scuttled out of England trying to get away from an unfaithful wife and a scandalous divorce. Can't have been much fun for a young filly. Still, at least we found out about the murder weapon. The cravat used to kill Rico was his own item of clothing, a gift from Nico Marx. The crossed pistols motif on it, that's the symbol of the Ten Tenors, some American organisation that Nico Marx knows well. They're her managers. Also, and pay careful attention to this, senors and senoritas, also, they're a crime syndicate. And C.D. Gonzalez has recently joined them. That must have riled our late friend Rico no end of ways. He didn't approve of people having rival loyalties. How do we know this? I'll tell you how we know this. We know this because that's why Rico ended his business arrangement with Che Guava. He didn't like the way that Lola Cabana had transferred her emotional allegiance from him and got herself shacked up with Shea. Confused? I won't be. I really think we're nearly there, my amigos and amigets. One more push, por favor. Adios, adios, adios. So there we have it, do we not? And a pretty barrel of fish you all are as well. Smuggling, adultery, revolution, you're an absolute chow, the whole lot of you. Never mind, never mind. This is a murder inquiry. We'll deal with the other things later. Right now, you have just one question. Who would want to kill Senior Rico Ricardo? Two questions. Who would want to kill Ricardo and... Who had the opportunity to do it? Now, do any of you have anything to say for yourselves? Right, listen up, folks. You know what's been bothering me. It's the key in the door. How did the murderer lock the door from the inside? And the answer, of course, is that that's not what happened. The only way it could have worked out is if the murderer locked the door from the outside, then pocketed the key and replaced it on the inside after the body was discovered. So, whoever did it had to have been one of those who broke into the room. Sir Ian Lemming was one of them. But what does he have to gain from killing Rico? He wanted funding for his film about Jane Blonde. Incidentally, old man, do you think you were barking up the wrong tree with this female secret agent business? Maybe maybe, maybe, maybe it'd be more successful if it were a chap rather than a chapess, no? Anyway, I digress. Where was I? Yes, Che Guava was also in the group who broke into Rico's office after the explosion. He's had a falling out with Rico, but there's no real reason for him to kill the man, is there? He didn't even know that his girlfriend, Lola Cabana, was going to benefit from Rico's will. Then there's the third person who broke into the room. Someone with very good cause to hate Rico, because her father's life had been ruined by her mother's adultery with the man. And that diary entry showing Rico's last ever meeting was with Elm C. Could have been Lola Cabana, of course, but it might not have been. And then there's that key again. I said it was wiped clean, no fingerprints. Well, that's the sort of thing that might well happen if the person handling it was wearing gloves. Someone who made a point of wearing gloves because, and I quote, we still have standards. Which means, Lady Common, that I'm going to have to arrest you for the murder of Rico Ricardo. And for the rest of you, well, you know, you know the toodle pip and all that. <laughs>